Hey guys, welcome back to Beard Zero Fishing. Today, I am super excited to bring to you on the channel the Do It Molds that I got recently. Been waiting for this, I know you guys have too, and I'm gonna go over whether they are gas or they are trash. I'm also gonna show you a little bit of injection molding today. So I'm gonna be using three of these molds today to do injection, and then in the future, I'm gonna be using the other three and doing some color matching and some very exciting videos coming up with that, but let's get it. First item I'm gonna talk about, I bought one of the Do It Mold injectors. Now, this injector seems different than my other injectors, definitely. It seems a little bit lighter, and it definitely is a little smaller than I was expecting for their standard one. But the biggest thing I'm gonna say is, I don't know if it's because it was shipped with these molds or if it was just the handling of the shipping service, but it came with a big old dent in it. And this is gonna definitely affect my ability to inject with it. I'm hoping that it'll smooth out in time, but as you can see, it's kinda, I would kinda use caution when buying any injectors from them. One, they're kinda small. Two, they're kinda pricey. And three, they seem they seem lighter and they seem like they'll transfer heat more through the walls of the injector. And what that will do is that's gonna cause your plastic to heat, to lose its heat a lot faster and you may have it start solidifying inside the tube. So the six molds I got, one I already kinda showed is the iCraw. It has four separate cavities in it. It's three and a half inches long, so it's gonna be an interesting little addition to the lures that I make. Now these are all sand cast aluminum molds. Now what does that mean? That means that they cost a lot less to produce and thus can be translated into savings for you. So if you're a, a DIY bait maker, these have been a very well-spoken of investment for those who want to make baits at home. Now what I have noticed is that, let's open up the frog here, is that the surface is nowhere near the finish of polished aluminum. So off top I would say that these are definitely probably not production grade quality. And the only thing I've done with these molds so far is I have oiled the hinges like they say says on them oil hinge so i've done that so two of the molds that i have so the eye craw the the frog bait that i just showed you i got a creature bait that one's going to be really cool i don't currently make any beaver tail type creature baits so this will be good although it's only a single cavity it's not necessarily meant for production it's just meant to be able to make for me but again, in here I can see the difference between this sand cast aluminum and polished aluminum. The finish isn't gonna be as good as a polished one. But that's okay for your average DIYer at home. It's okay to be able to have that. Now next, I got the Senkos. Well, it is the Do It Yamamoto Senko. But this one has four cavities in it. It'll be the first stick worm that I've made. This one actually doesn't look too bad because of all the, the ridges inside it. But it is going to come out with that do it on it. On the belly band of it there. Now, I also got the finesse crawler. And again... Don't know how well that shows up on camera, but it's a very, very rough finish in here. Very rough finish. So it's probably not going to produce the highest grade lures. But they'll catch fish, because I guarantee you fish don't sit around and have conventions about how smooth the lure you have is. And then the last one is the ribbon worm. Seven inch ribbon worm has two separate cavities in here. Same thing though, it's you can see it's very, very rough finish in here. And that rough finish is likely going to translate into the finished lure. But I am optimistic. I've heard a lot of good things about these molds, and at their price point, they're very affordable. They seem very sturdy, and I like that they have the hinge on the one side. 
I, I really, really like that about these molds. That makes it a little bit easier and I don't have to worry about clamping down both sides. I only have to worry about clamping down the, the outside of it. You still want to clamp these molds. You still, when you're injecting, you don't want to apply a ton of pressure or you will flash it. I won't be able to speak to longevity of these molds yet, but at least I can give you a, an overall first look at these and see what the finish of the lures comes out like and how easily these release. I'll go ahead and move these over to my bait making station and let's get to cooking. All right, so I got a cup of Pondus Monster reheated. This is remelt plastic. I got the three worm molds here. I'm gonna use all three injectors. Apologies in advance for the sound of my ventilation fans going in the back. But whenever you work with plastic like this, you have to have ventilation. So, let's give it a go. That took up the, almost the whole thing. Let me try the, the do it injector. See how it does. Yes, I thought I've got one spot. It's gonna cause me a little bit of trouble. No idea if that even filled all the way. Yeah, I don't really like this injector very much. I can't say I like it. That little ding in it is definitely creating some trouble. Quick stir. Just to be sure I get all the pigment stirred up and everything. Then, then, stick our injector in there. Soak up as much as we can. Pop it in there. Start filling. I'm not applying a lot of lot of pressure. Oh crap. I already flashed it. I didn't even apply a bunch of pressure and flashed it already. So this may be my lack of experience with these molds, or it could be a bad sign. I won't know until I do a few more runs and see. I might have to just clamp it down a ton more because I wasn't even really putting very much pressure on it. You can see here flashed it out this end. Let's let this set up and cure and then we'll bust them open. All right, so now that they've had enough time to cool off and solidify, let's go ahead and bust these molds open and see what we came up with. So first, I'm gonna open the ribbon tail worm. This is the one I did with the, the do it injector. saying I didn't really like it because it, it was binding up. But let's go ahead. Bust this mold open, see what we got. So yeah, like I suspected, didn't completely fill. Yep, didn't fill all the way because I couldn't, couldn't overcome that without applying too much pressure. So this will inherently become remelt again. But looking at the surface of this, it's not horrible, but not exactly production grade. Now the Senko, now this one, it felt like it was starting to flash when I did it. So let's go ahead and see. Let's bust this open. Let's see what we can come up with. All right. So little, little tiny bit of flashing right here. Not the end of the world. Let me go ahead and pop these out and see what we came up with here. Set that out to the side. I need some heavy old worms, man. <laughs> these jokers are heavy. They're going to cast like crazy. They have a little bit of flashing in between. These two are kind of stuck together because of the flashing. Otherwise, the overall finish, again, not exactly production quality, but for fishing and catching fish. Let me see. Tear that off there. So, again, these don't produce don't seem to produce production quality lures by any means, but for a DIY angler to make these at home, this is actually probably a pretty 
pretty good representation of a stickworm. You can see a little bit of flashing near the runner as well. But yeah, and a little bit of denting on them. So yeah, not exactly production grade. But hey, these are usable lures for a DIY angler. Now let's go ahead and bust open our final mold. Now this one, I absolutely flashed it. Now it could be the learning curve. Maybe I need a stronger clamp on here or a couple clamps. Not sure, but it did definitely flash on the end. Let's pop it open. Okay, so I can definitely tell we've flashed a bit. Up here at the top, we flashed almost the first half of the worms, but this flashing will peel off pretty easy. Now these actually turned out pretty good. So after getting to check out these molds, what do I think of them? Well, the molds themselves, I really like them. The design of them, they're, they're, they're pretty cool molds, especially at the price point for a DIY bait maker. These are definitely a must have. Now, if you're trying to do production molding, stay away from these. These aren't what you want. But for my purposes here on the channel, these are gonna serve very nicely. But I would say stay away from the injectors from Do It Molds. They're super, super lightweight. And mine came dented, so it's almost impossible for me to use this thing without it seizing up on me. So, eh, you win some, you lose some. That is my opinions on the Do It products that we went over in this video. Coming up in the future, I'm going to be having the other three molds that I didn't show the injection with today, along with color matching. It's going to be exciting. I'm going to show you guys Rusty Sunfish. Show you guys zombie puke. Those will be some very, very cool colors that you guys can make at home if you're a DIY bait maker. Love to hear what you think about these molds. If you've used them yourself, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Catch you next time.